Hey everybody, this is Dan and Don coming to you from The Clinical Trials Guru. Again, that website is www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Hey, Dan and I are here to talk to you about uh, a subject, and this subject runs personal for me. Um, my wife just had a relative pass away from cancer, and this uh, person was under the age of 50, and uh, the type of cancer they had, um, I'm not sure why they get it, but I guess that's not important. The important part is, is that... He spent a year trying to find, he and his wife, and his wife was diligently trying to find uh, different programs that would work and keep this young man alive. He got to the point where he just couldn't deal with it anymore, and they finally had to let him go because they were trying to keep him alive uh, through a machine, and he just uh, couldn't handle it anymore. Um, the reason I'm doing this video is because I think that we need more involvement and finding cures for a lot of illnesses, and, and cancer is definitely one, and I know there are a lot of studies going on. I know there are people out there like Eat Patient Dave, so forth, and they're out there trying to spread the word, but there are only a few people can cover only so much ground. So we're hoping that with this video we can reach the public and reach sponsors as well on trying to find ways to reach the public. We have spoken with someone before from an institution that does a lot of uh, marketing and stuff out not just here in the United States, uh, but around the world. And one of the bit of information that they came up with is that 75% of the population here in the United States have no idea what research is and what research is about. <coughs> I know from my own experience, um, a lot of people, when you talk to them about research, the first thing they think is, oh, that's risky, something bad might happen to me. Oh, you want to use me for a guinea pig. And that's not the case. Um, I think there's a, some way we have to get out there and educate the public on exactly what research is all about and the safeguards that are put in place to reduce and minimize any kind of risk. But we need to do it at a level where we can reach the public, not from a perspective uh, where we're talking shop. Because when you get into shop language, very technical talk, you lose the public every time. Um, I think there's a lot that can be done to reduce uh, losing people like this, this relative, um, I don't see any reason that uh, this person uh, had to uh, had to die at such a young age. Uh, but again, I'm not a clinician. But I think that we need to get more involved. Um, for those out there in the public, you need to learn more about research, what what's involved in research, and, and, and find ways to educate yourself as much as possible, so you're not so afraid about approaching it. Uh, we need people out there that uh, have illnesses that need help, as well as people out there that are healthy and normal that could get involved and help bring some of these medications to market. Uh, sponsors, I think we need you to, to start finding some way to get to the public. And always, and, and maybe going to the government and, and finding ways to get the government to set aside their political concerns. Concerns are like whether or not they're going to get back in office if they support this or or who's going to look at them in a bad way and they're going to lose their constituencies when time for um, for trying to renew their position in, in political offices. We need to move away from that and look at the uh, best concerns of the public. Yeah, and so we've interviewed people on this before. Mm -hmm. uh, Eat Patient Day you brought up. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's unfortunate. I mean, clinical trials a large percentage of the time for life-threatening conditions and you can talk to or watch our interview with Etienne Taylor from uh, what was that website called um, Clinical Trial Select uh, he talks about how for people with life-threatening conditions clinical trials is many many times the best treatment alternative however is only offered to that person a handful of times so the, uh, the, the two percentages are not lined up. In other words, it helps, it's proven, it is statistically proven to help people with life-threatening conditions a high percentage of times, yet it's only offered a very low percentage of times to these people. And more needs to be done, uh, more awareness for the physicians, but all, also for the patients. You've got to become an e patient, like e patient day. Watch our interview with him. Uh, be empowered. He didn't take no for an answer. He went online, researched finally found a clinical trial treatment mm -hmm. in which uh, he was able to save his life. And it was a clinical trial. Um, it wouldn't have been offered to him 
through a regular physician. He had to go out and do his homework. So this is a message to the patients and the physicians out there to kind of uh, just do your homework, learn more about research. Um, I'm not saying it's going to help everyone. I don't know if it would have helped uh, right. your wife's relative, but um, it may have. And uh, right. you never know. And when you're in a life-threatening situation like that, you know, sometimes there's not much to lose if you do try to join a clinical trial. Um, it may very often be the best treatment alternative. It's statistically proven to be the best treatment alternative a high percentage of times. Yet it's only being offered a handful of times. So there's a huge disconnect between the two and we need to shorten that gap. Right. I think it increases the opportunity for uh, treatments uh, along with the, uh, the general treatments that are out there. As Dan said, clinicians, physicians, um, I think you need not be uncomfortable with it and not worry about that you're going to lose a patient if you get them involved in research because it's about the bottom line is taking care of that patient. And, and that's where we need to go with things. Um, we need to increase the chances of saving lives. And the only way you're going to do that is, is, is everybody get involved. Because when you start talking about 75% of 300 million people, you're talking about what? Um, about 250 million people <coughs> that are completely unaware of research and what research is all about. So there's a lot of education that needs to be done. But I think more people can get involved where we can get more work done in the research arena and quit worrying about who's making what kind of money off of research. Set that thing aside. Mm -hmm. It should not be a concern on whether or not pharma is making big money off of these medications and stuff and treatments. That's not the issue. The issue is about saving lives. And that's what we have to get to. And that site was Clinical Trial Select. You can go watch the interview with Etienne Taylor. It talks about life-threatening conditions in clinical trials. You can go, you type in your life-threatening condition. You find tons of data on studies that are out there. And you can bring that data to your doctor and ask him if, you know, what his thoughts are right. on that. And that way you at least open the conversation up. and. Like I said, a clinical trial is not for everyone, but in life-threatening conditions, it's something that certainly shouldn't be overlooked because some of the most advanced uh, medications are still experimental. Right. So anyway, um, this is a plea from Dan and Don from the Clinical mm -hmm. Trials Guru. Get involved, everybody. And as Dan said, taking that data to your doctor and makes your doctor get involved. Makes them think about what's in front of them. Anyway. This is Dan and Don signing off from The Clinical Trials Guru. Again, that website is www.theclinicaltrialsguru.com. Thank you.